Hey now, welcome to another edition of the Inside BS Show. I'm Dave Lorenzo, and today we're taking you inside the world of a banker. You see, I get, I don't want to call them complaints, but I get feedback from my clients all the time that, you know, banks, they never want to loan me money when I need it, and they always want me to work with them when I don't need money. Well, I have the perfect guest to clear up the mystery of working with a commercial banker. You see, today we're talking with Michael Samuels. He's a vice president at Flushing Bank in New York. He's gonna help us understand how to develop a relationship with a banker, when to start talking to a banker, and why you need a really good relationship. And he's probably gonna tell us why working with a community bank or a regional bank is better than working with some of the giants. I'm just guessing that he's gonna tell us about that. Please join me in welcoming Michael Samuels to the Inside BS Show. Michael, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Dave. Good to be here. Um, so happy to be on the podcast. Okay, let's talk a little bit about you and um, and you know what you do and why you do it. Tell us how you got into banking and tell us a little bit about what you're doing at Flushing Bank right now. Okay, so as you can tell from my funny accent, I'm an immigrant. Um, like many immigrants, I came here many years ago with $40 in my pocket. I landed in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, and I had no idea what life in America was going to be about. And I had $40, two 20s, and I didn't even want to break one of the 20s because I didn't know if I would get another 20. I had no job, um, and I just had to kind of figure it out. So I did. I figured it out, and it all started a few years later when I um, became a stockbroker. Back in the early 90s, I was a stockbroker, um, just like you see in the movies, you know, um, The Wolf of Wall Street and all those other movies. I went to a firm in Chicago. I started cold calling from the directory, um, the white pages, um, to, you know, anybody that I could, that would pick the phone up. I would dial five, six hundred dollars a day and get through to probably, you know, 10 or 20 people and try to sell them stocks and bonds. And that's how I started in the financial services industry. So I did that for about 10 years. Um, in between those 10 years, I moved from Chicago to New York City. And in the early 2000s, I kind of got burnt out from smiling and dialing. Um, that was, you know, something that really took a mental toll on you every day. So in the early days of the internet and on job sites, I put my resume on hotjobs.com which back then was a, um, you know, an early internet job site. And I had an um, a, a Excite email. That's how long ago it was. I didn't check the email for a while after putting the resume up, and all of a sudden, a few weeks later, I checked, and J.P. Morgan Chase had emailed me asking me to come in to interview with them. So I went in, and fortunately, I got the job as a private banker, and I spent a couple of years there in private banking. And then I left and I went to HSBC. And that's where I became a commercial banker or a business banker. So that's how I started. And I've worked at the big banks and the small banks. And I've been with Flushing for the last two years, having worked at several of the big banks and small banks. What I do on a daily basis is I help clients with their banking needs. And what that means is, is that it's a business owner who has some type of a lending relationship with me, whether it's a line of credit or a business loan or a commercial mortgage. And they also have a depository accounts with me where they have different tools, cash management tools, treasury management tools to help their money move in and out more efficiently. So that's what I do. I, I help business owners with all their banking needs, whatever, whether it's lending or depository needs. And of course, the biggest part of it is that there is a relationship there. And that's the big thing with my career and the banks that I've worked with, especially Flux. I love your story. I think you have a fantastic story. I want you to, um, before we get into commercial banking, I want you to share with people 
how the experience of making hundreds of cold calls every day gave you a renewed appreciation or a, or a, a found appreciation for relationship-based sales. Talk about that because I, I run into people all the time, like professionals, like you know, lawyers, CPAs, uh, you know, architects, and they and they tell me all the time, "Oh, Dave, you know, these networking events are going to kill me." Right? <laughs> Try making five hundred cold calls a day. You want to talk about something that's going to kill you, Michael? Tell people, explain to people how much better relationship-based sales is than cold calling. Oh, it's so much better. It's like night and day. It's like heaven and hell. Um, yeah, so so before um, the internet and social media and, you know, the, the real electronic age that we're in now, you know, there were telephones on everybody's desk. There was the yellow pages. There was the white pages. Um, for you to get clients in the brokerage industry, you had to cold call. There was no other way to do it. You know, nobody was walking in the door. You couldn't go, you know, advertise somewhere and expect people to, to respond. Um, so you had to dial. You had to dial numbers to strangers and, you know, introduce yourself and tell them why you're calling. Tell them, you know, the advantage of doing a transaction with you as opposed to somebody else. But it was a tedious process. You literally would sit there and just dial numbers. 90% of the time, either nobody would answer or the number was bad. Well, 10% of the time, people would pick up. And as soon as they heard, you know, who you were, click. That's, it's not even like they said, no, I'm not interested. They just hung the phone up. So, you know, we, we had this motto, you're... You're, you're, you're one dial closer to a yes, right? So that's what kind of kept you going. But it was from 8 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening. And you just had to do it. And it, you know, you didn't know anything different. That's just how it was. So, you know, so, so, so having done that for years, as opposed to my, uh, method today of getting new clients, it's like night and day. Today, it's all about relationships. It's all about referrals. It's all about trying to solve problems. Um, it's all about being a trusted advisor. So it's a totally different sales process than it was from cold calling. Um, you know, cold calling, obviously, just transactional. There was no emotion whatsoever because I would never get upset that somebody would hang up on me. Um, that's just that's just part of the process, right? So, you know, today it's a lot different. It's it's not as transactional. Um, it's more relationship driven. It's more purpose driven, and it's more holistic than it was years ago, where it was just looking for that one trade. You know, today it's not just one transaction. It's a holistic approach to. Um, you know, building a relationship with a client. Yeah, and let's let's talk a little bit about that now because you now have you know when you're when you're a stockbroker, there's always another stock, right? There's always there's always something else to to talk to the clients about. But you're not really solving a problem. You're helping them fulfill a dream. You're helping them achieve their financial goals, maybe. But in your role now, that you're really solving problems for people. So talk about the you know the breadth of the products that you tend to that you that you'll talk to clients about on a daily basis because you could go from getting a call about a line of credit to maybe uh, talking about um, you know accounts receivable or you know some type of a trust account relationship with a professional. So talk about all the different things you do as a commercial banker. What are some of the things your clients are calling you about? Okay, so as a commercial banker, um, it's it's all about what the client needs are. Um, I deal with a lot of small to medium sized businesses, businesses that on the low low end have revenues of maybe three or four million dollars, depending on the industry, up to you know companies that have revenue of seventy five to hundred million dollars, and again, it depends on the industry. So typically with a client um, 
that falls into that category. They are really looking for a relationship with a bank that will at attend to their needs, right? And also at the same time, be proactive in terms of the banking relationship. And what I mean by that is, is that if they're in a business that the industry is growing really fast or they're expanding, then they want to make sure that as a bank, uh, you know, uh, uh, having a relationship with a banker, I understand that, I can see that just like they can see it, and then I am also, um, you know, proactive in, in, in trying to help them solve it. So, for example, I have, you know, a client now that's an electrical contractor. Obviously, I can't give any names, right? But I'll just, you know, speak in, in, in generics. Um, that's an electrical contractor. They were doing a really great, great business pre-COVID. COVID came. And, you know, we're, I'm in New York City, um, for those of you who don't know. Um, and for 2020, they just had a really, really bad year. And, you know, just like a lot of businesses did. Well, 2021, they had an even worse year even though we were a year into COVID. And the reason was it was a combination of not just the COVID situation, but the supply chain, the inflation, like all their um, supplies, raw materials, the prices went up so much. And, you know, typically when you're in a situation like that with a bank and you have a lending relationship, a bank, most banks will say, hey, we're going to cut you off, right? Well, in this case, we didn't. I actually sat down with them um, at a meeting a couple months back, and I said, look, guys, I know this is temporary. I know that you guys are going to turn this around. Um, I looked at their projections. Um, I looked at all the contracts that they had in place. And we're right now in the middle of turning this thing around. They're probably going to end up having the best first quarter of the year they, they, they ever um, had. Um, I have a line of credit in place for them to help them grow. Um, they're in a situation now where um, they've, one of the partners have, has gone into this other business, something separate, and, and, and it's an energy company, and that business is also doing well. So I'm also helping them with that. So they were so appreciative of me sitting down with them and, you know, kind of talking through what happened for those two years, but also, more importantly, looking forward and how I can help them. And, you know, it, it took a little bit of work and it took some convincing and some job owning for me to, you know, talk to my guys here internally because I don't make the final credit decision. The credit decision is made by, you know, a separate group. That's the credit group. But, you know, I really went to bat for them. And that's... That's typically how it works when it comes to having a good relationship with a banker. I mean, that's one, you know, that's a story where you had a company that was doing bad. But also, on the other hand, you have um, other relationships that I, there are other relationships that I have where, you know, they didn't do so bad during COVID. Um, but I was there for them. I helped, made sure they got their PPP loans, um, you know, and, and, and I made sure that, you know, they got the full amount, they got both their draws, I made sure the loans were forgiven, and they were really appreciative of that, because there are a lot of companies out there that got left out of the whole PPP situation. Sure, sure. All right, Michael, so I'm going to ask you a question, I want you to, I want you to take a minute and think about the answer. I know you know the answer, and I think I know what the answer is, but I'll be curious to hear what your answer is. I want you to talk about, because you've worked for huge multinational banks, and now you're working for a community bank, I want you to explain to folks in just one minute the difference between working with a community bank or working with, you know, a, a national bank or a multinational bank. So think about that for one minute, Michael, while I remind people that we're brought to you by Sandrowski Corporate Advisors. You see, since 1983, Sandrowski Corporate Advisors has provided expert client service to a nationwide base of really professionals and business owners, privately held business owners. And they do it in the areas of tax planning, family office advisory, dispute advisory, business valuation, litigation support, forensic accounting, and risk management. Now, 
obviously what you didn't hear in there was audits because Sandrowski focuses on privately held businesses and families of wealth. So what they do is they look at you as a person from a holistic perspective. If you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, they'll help you examine your business, they'll help you examine the structure of your business, and they'll help you review that from a standpoint of tax exposure. Then they'll look at your personal portfolio, if you allow them to, and they'll make recommendations for how you can reduce your tax exposure from a personal perspective. Now, if you're thinking of selling your business in the next, say, five to 10 years, you gotta give Sandrowski a call. Why? Because they might be able to help you qualify for a small business tax exemption. There's a qualified small business exemption in the IRS code that allows you as a business owner to exempt some of the profits, some of the windfall that you will receive when you go to sell your business. Now, I can't explain all the details to here for you because number one, I'm not a CPA. Number two, we don't have that kind of time. So I want you to call this number today and talk to Sandrowski about your business. Tell him you heard Dave talking about the qualified small business exemption. Call them at 866-717-1607, 866-717-1607. Sandrowski Corporate Advisors is a CPA firm with a different perspective. We're also brought to you by My Revenue Roadmap Guide. You want a business development guide, you want a plan that you can follow to grow your business, you want to leverage relationships like Michael and I are talking about, well, I've got the plan for you and I'm going to give it to you for free. Here's all you need to do. Go to revenueroadmapguide.com. That's a website, revenueroadmapguide.com. Enter your contact info. You'll be able to immediately download my business development plan, the same plan I use with my clients. You can download it for free. It's my gift to you for watching the show, for listening to the show. I appreciate you. Go to revenueroadmapguide.com, enter your contact info, download your free business development plan today. We're talking to Michael Samuels. He's a vice president at Flushing Bank. He helps business owners just like you. If you want to reach out to him, you can call 646 646- 923-9536, 646-923-9536. Okay, Michael, so before we took that brief break, I asked you about the difference between working at large multinational banks or doing business with large multinational banks compared to doing business with a community bank. Share some of those differences with us, please. Thanks, Dave. So there is a big difference between dealing with a big national bank as opposed to a smaller community or regional bank. The main difference is is that with a smaller community or regional bank, it's more personal. It's a lot more personal. It's a lot more relationship-driven. Just like every business, banks have to make money. And large banks are typically public companies, and a lot of small banks are too. And it's about the bottom line. And what has happened, especially in the last 10, 15 years, is a lot of the large banks have tiered services. And what I mean by that is is that if you're a business of a certain size, a certain revenue size, or a certain size in terms of profits, then that determines what part of the bank your relationship is held in. So, for example, if you're a $5 million a year company in revenue with a large bank, you're going to fall into a certain category and the relationship is managed by a certain group. Or if you're a $50 million company, then it's probably a group that's a little bit above that or, and, and so on and so forth. So it's a lot more transactional. Um, There really isn't much of a relationship um, unless you're really, really large and you are in their corporate banking program. With a community bank or a regional bank, the smaller banks, that doesn't happen. There's no tier. In my group in the bank, in my portfolio, I have clients that are on the low end, as I said before, three, four million in revenue, and on the high end, 75 million to 100 million in revenue. They all dial the same number, and I pick the phone up, and it doesn't matter 
who's on the other end of the line. Everybody gets treated the same way. They have me as a banker. They have me as a resource. Um, they have a team in place that I have here that I partner with. And we all know them personally. You know, we, um, I, I like to say we're, 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 we're large enough to help you and we're small enough to know you. That's the way it works here. So it's a much more personal relationship with a smaller bank. Um, you, you have a banker, there's a person that answers the phone. We don't have 800 numbers here. Well, we actually, we have a couple, but that's for people, you know, if they have a problem with like internet banking or something like that. But typically with the clients here at Flushing Bank, you either call a phone number that somebody directly answers or send an email, not to a general mailbox, but to your banker, you're always assigned, banker, assigned a banker. And that doesn't matter whether it's in my group, which is more the commercial banking middle market group, or it's on the retail side with the branches. For example, in our branches, we do not have teller lines. If you go into a, one of our branches, no matter what you want to do, you go, you sit down at a desk with somebody and you're dealt with personally, as opposed to most of the bigger banks where you go and you join a line. That's great. I, I think that's a great explanation. I love it. Let's talk a little bit, Michael, now about how to establish a relationship with a banker because I find most entrepreneurs, most professionals, they don't get it. And here's, let me give you my philosophy and I want to, I want your take on my philosophy and then I, I want to hear what your, what your thoughts are about establishing a relationship. So if you don't have a, you know, $5 million to put in a bank, right? You don't have $5 million to put on deposit. You, you know, you don't need a $20 million line of credit, but you know, you need to use a bank anyway, my advice is refer some business to three or four or five bankers, see how those bankers handle the business that you refer them and go with the banker who treats the people that you refer the best. That's how I, you know, if you want to get a banker's attention, there's two things you can do. Put $15 million in the bank Second thing, refer them some business. That's my philosophy about establishing a relationship with a banker. Michael, what do you think? What is, what is your philosophy? What should people be doing? So you are correct. Those are definitely ways that you'll get a banker's attention. Uh, that is very true. But it's all about the fact that when you're a business owner, you need to have a relationship with several people, right? Right. You have to have a good relationship with a CPA or a CPA firm. You have to have a good relationship with an attorney or a law firm. Well, you also have to have a good relationship with a banker and a bank. And the reason is, is that they're, they're an, a critical and integral part of whether you succeed or you fail. No, you don't have to have $5 million in the bank. I've had over the years businesses that started out with me with less than a million dollars in revenue, and they're up to $20 million in revenue. Um, I've had businesses where the conversation started when they were making the decision to form the company. So this is even before they had a business. So my advice to business owners and to professionals is, number one, you should have a banking relationship with a banker and a bank. It doesn't have to be that you have to put a large sum in the bank. You always want to establish the relationship at the very beginning. You know, even, even if you haven't formed the company yet, or even if you just started the company, get a, have a relationship with a banker. And that banker is going to be critical as the years go on in terms of your growth. I'll give you examples. So I have a company now that's a consulting company. They started out about four years ago, and they probably did less than 300000 in revenue. Today, well, for 22, they're probably going to end up doing around $6 million in revenue. And they actually don't need money now as far as credit, but I recently got them approved for a half a million dollar line of credit. And the reason is, is get the line of credit when you don't need it, because when you need it, you can't get it, right? That's when your financials aren't going to look pretty. That's when a bank is going to say no. 
So the banking relationship between the business owner and the banker is critical to the growth. And the other thing is, you know, a banker serves as a trusted advisor, right? And one of the things that I think makes me different, well, there are a couple of things that makes me different is, number one is, I, I'm a trusted advisor to most of my clients because I always want to make sure that if there's a need there and it's not something that in, that's in my wheelhouse, I can help them. They may need a new CPA, they may need a new attorney, you know, something. And that's, that's a, my differentiator. The other one is my response time. Um, I've always tried to respond like really fast when it comes to client needs. I don't have the answer every time I respond right away, but I want to at least respond and acknowledge your, your, um, your inquiry. And if I don't have the answer, then I'll tell you when I'll have the answer. So the, yes, the, the, the relationship between the business owner is and the banker is just as critical as the relationship with the CPA, with the attorney, and all the other people that you need to succeed in your business. That's great. Thank you so much for that. All right, Michael. So now uh, I'm going to ask you to think of three things, three things that you want folks to take away from our time together. Okay. I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. Think about three points that you want people to remember from our conversation. Take a minute. And while you're thinking of that, I'm going to remind people again about Sandrowski Corporate Advisors. You heard me talk about them before. Their phone number is 866-717-1607. If you are concerned that you may be paying too much in taxes, you're concerned that your business is not being fairly valued, perhaps you and your partner are splitting up and you can't decide how much the business is worth, or if you're subject to some sort of litigation and you need someone to do an analysis on the financials, whether you're on one side or the other, Sundrowski is the firm to call. They do all these things and they've done those things for 30 years. You can reach out and give them a call at 866-717-1607, 866-717-1607. Also, get your revenue roadmap guide. It's a business development plan. It will help you grow your revenue using relationship-based business development tools. All you need to do is go to revenueroadmapguide.com, enter the contact info. It's the same guide I use with my clients. Our guest today is Michael Samuels. He's a banker. He's the vice president of Flushing Bank. He's been helping us understand what it means to have a relationship with a banker, how you can establish a relationship with a banker, and quite honestly, the best ways to connect with a banker to start a relationship. If you wanna reach out to Michael, you can give him a call at 646-923-9536, 646-923-9536. Okay, Michael, what are the three things you'd like the people watching, the people listening to remember from our time together today? Well, the first thing is, is that, um you know, I, as as a banker and somebody who also was a small business owner and somebody who also worked on the investment side, when I develop a relationship with a client, I have a very good understanding of what's going on with them and, and, and how to help them, not just with their banking needs, but with other needs. Because I've been a small business owner myself, because I worked on the investment side, I understand, you know, in terms of um, when they succeed, um, things that they can do to uh, build their net worth. Um, I have a very good understanding of that, having experience with that. So I think that's a big differentiator when it comes to myself and other bankers. The second thing is, is, you know, um, helping clients with their banking needs gives me the most satisfaction when I give them money. And even in my days as a stockbroker, that, that's, that's the thing that I get the most satisfaction from. So like, for example, in my brokerage days, when I helped somebody uh, save to send their kids to college and I was able to get them that check that August for the kids to start to go to school, that was my most satisfying moment. 
as a banker, my most satisfying moment is the same thing. So for example, I closed a deal last December for a manufacturing company that was really growing really fast. They were in the Bronx in New York at a, in an 8,000 square foot warehouse. And I got them a commercial mortgage for a new warehouse that was 18,000 square feet in Newark, New Jersey. At that closing, I was so happy because now this business owner can move into a bigger space, get more machinery, hire more people, and you know, grow her business. That's the satisfaction that you get. So those are the things that, that I like. And then the last thing is, it's never just about pricing, okay? When people, when business owners borrow money, I, you know, I, I, I'm sh I know price sensitivity is a huge thing, and, and, and of course it is. But it's not just about the pricing of the loan or the line of credit or the mortgage. It's about the relationship that you build with that bank and that banker. Because there are going to be times when you're going to have a tough time in business. You're going to have that year, like we all do, where for whatever reason, circumstances beyond your control, you just didn't have a great year. And and, and it, you know, and the bank has to review your financials every year. Well, listen, if you have a really great relationship with your banker, that can be the big differentiator in terms of a banking relationship. So that's very, very critical. All right, great tips. Thank you, Michael. So if you wanna reach out to Michael, call him at 646-923. 9536 646 923 9536 Michael Samuels Vice President of Flushing Bank thank you so much for joining us today your insight was invaluable we really appreciate it Thank you Dave thank you very much for having me on All righty folks that'll do it for this edition of the Inside BS show I'm Dave Lorenzo we'll see you right back here again tomorrow with another great interview until then here's hoping you make a great living and Live a great life.